Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Deborah Gist, and I'm the superintendent of Tulsa Public Schools, the proud uh, superintendent and graduate of There's Tulsa certain Public Schools. Work. Lover of Tulsa. Oh, we'll, we'll grab a view. Uh, okay, now we're back. Um, and here we are this morning. As of today, we are 10 days away, just 10 days away from the start of another wonderful year of teaching and learning. And uh, this time of year is incredibly exciting for us. It's my favorite time of year. And we have been preparing, as we always do, for this first day of school for many months. Um, in particular, this year, we've been preparing not only uh, our usual preparation, but also making sure that we are fully prepared for a safe launch to our school year. Um, over the past year and a half, we've learned so much as a community, as a country, as a school district, and uh, that is helping us to be even better prepared than we've been before. And I'm so confident that when we all work together, which I know Tulsans will, and strive to keep each other safe and well, following safety practices that we now know are proven to be successful, that we're going to be able to keep each other safe, keep our students, their our team members, and all of their families safe, and keep our students in school in person together with their peers and with their teachers where they need to be. And so we're here today to talk about all the ways in which every Tulsan, our students, our teachers, our support professionals, all of their families, um, our students, parents, guardians, um, everyone in our community can work together to contribute not only to safety and wellness uh, now and moving forward, but also to helping us keep our students in school safely learning together in our school buildings in person. So we talked so much last year, and I know that everyone knows the importance of the three W's, wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. And they work, and we must be consistent with those. Um, we also know that things are different now. For one thing, the, uh, the Delta variant is much more contagious and uh, things like last year when we could say, you know, don't be within uh, close proximity of someone within a certain number of minutes. Um, what we know is the contagiousness of the Delta variant is such that it is a matter of seconds. It's very, very different. So all of those things still matter, wearing our masks, washing our hands and watching our distance. But the other thing that's different now that's so important is that we have, a, we have vaccines, we have safe, proven vaccines. And so few more W's, who can get vaccinated for COVID-19, where they can get vaccinated and why should they do it? And that's what we're here to talk about today. So we know that everyone ages 12 and older are now able to be vaccinated for COVID-19. They can get their vaccine free of charge at any one of the vaccination sites here in the city of Tulsa. And all Tulsans, uh, including our team members and including our students who are 12 and older, should get vaccinated. The COVID vaccines are safe, they're effective, and we know that they will protect Tulsans, they will protect our family members, they will protect our students. Um, and our team members, our teachers and our support professionals, they will protect them from COVID-19 this school year. We do not want uh, any situation where uh, classrooms or schools are having to shift between in-person learning and distance learning. However, um, I wanna point out that we have a number of things that are, that are going on that are contributing to the possibility that that could happen um, at times. Um, not as a system, but with classrooms or, or schools or groups of students or even a student uh, and, and the, the family that that would affect. Um, we have, here are the factors. We have a teacher shortage in our state and in Tulsa. We have a substitute teacher shortage in our state and in Tulsa. We also know that only about 40% of Oklahomans are fully vaccinated and just 15% of Tulsa County um, young people ages 
12 to 17 have received the vaccine. And in addition to that, we know that in our district, we have 17,000 students who are not yet old enough. They're not yet eligible for vaccinations. Um, and so these factors, including um, other safety measures, like we, we have some team members who um, uh, are at greater risk, um, team members who um, and students who have autoimmune diseases, who are battling cancer right now, um, for whom the vaccine um, doesn't fully protect them, and we have a responsibility to protect them. We are seeing really concerning trends um, with the Delta variant, as I mentioned, and that is true, of course, not just here in Tulsa, but everywhere across the country. And so in our district, with our team, uh, we're gonna continue carrying out the strongest safety measures in place that we can. And we've done really important things like the ventilation work that we've done. We have strong safety practices around uh, monitoring symptoms, having hand washing stations and, and hand sanitizer and cleaning and uh, contact tracing and quarantining and all the things that we know that we need to have in place. But it is up to Tolson's as well to step up, roll up their sleeves, get vaccinated and be a part together with us of making sure that we can all move forward together with school in person as much as we possibly can. We have an incredible group of folks who've joined us today to have this conversation. And I'm so excited that one of those folks is the Tulsa Health Department Executive Director, uh, Bruce Dart. And Dr. Dart has been an incredible partner in this work, um, is joining us this afternoon to share more about the conditions that we have here in place in Tulsa and uh, really tell you from a more expert perspective the importance of getting vaccinated. Thank you, Dr. Gist. And, you know, I, I really want to take this time to say I'm personally grateful to you and your leadership within Tulsa Public Schools and the community at large to ensure the safety of all students, faculty, and staff. Um, the Tulsa Health Department remains a committed partner to all local Tulsa County school districts. And our agency has worked closely with many school administrators here in Tulsa County to review their COVID-19 safety plans and provide recommendations in accordance with C CDC guidelines. I want to thank everyone who has taken a, the necessary steps to prevent infection, particularly those who have received COVID-19 vaccines. Remember, vaccines remain our number one preventative tool. Getting vaccinated is the best way to, to protect yourself, your family, and your community from the virus that causes COVID-19. The FDA authorized COVID-19 vaccines are safe and highly effective at preventing illnesses, hospitalizations, and deaths due to COVID-19. For the strongest protection against COVID-19, you need to be fully vaccinated. Vaccines are free. They're widely available at, um, in our community to anyone age 12 and, and over. You can schedule uh, an appointment with the Tulsa Health Department online at vaccinate918.com or find a healthcare provider near you. Local pharmacies and major retailers carry the vaccines as well and always at no cost. August is typically, typically one of the busiest months here at Tulsa Health Department as we administer thousands of routine childhood immunizations and provide important documents like birth certificates and, sh and shot records during this time before school starts. We are committed to helping parents prepare to go back to school. You can find everything you need at www.tulsa-health.org slash back to school. Appointments are required this year for services, so please plan accordingly. You can receive your COVID-19 vaccine alongside your child receiving their routine childhood immunizations as well. As a parent and a grandparent myself, I can assure you that I personally support a safe return to the classroom. In-person learning is critical for the educational and social development of students of all ages. The top priority is to ensure that schools can safely open and operate in a manner that prioritizes the health and safety of students teachers, school staff, their families, and more importantly, the broad community. Preventing the spread of COVID-19, keeping children healthy, and meeting their educational and social, social needs are not mutually exclusive goals. Data has shown that the Delta variant is significantly more contagious than the initial strain of COVID-19, and that people shed much higher viral loads. Scientists and public health officials are still learning about how the Delta variant affects children, 
including whether it's more severe for children than other COVID-19 strains. As COVID-19 rises across the country, pediatric cases unfortunately are rising alongside adult cases. Current numbers of Oklahoma indicate that 44 of the 893 hospitalizations um, are in pediatric patients from this recent COVID Delta, excuse me, Delta surge. THC epidemiologists have identified recent outbreaks in facilities where people gather and live, including congregate settings, daycares, and schools. Data show that COVID-19 vaccines are extremely effective in protecting fully vaccinated people from catching and spreading the virus, including the Delta variant. But it's critical that people are fully vaccinated to assure protection. New data show that a small number of vaccinated people can be infected by the Delta variant and may be contagious. These cases represent a very small amount of transmission occurring around the country. The best way to reduce the spread of the Delta variant in schools and communities is for all eligible adolescents and adults to get vaccinated while following a layered preventative approach, including masking indoors whenever you're out in public, socially distancing where possible, frequent hand washing, and staying home when sick. Again, this layered approach to using all preventative tools is extremely critical to going forward until COVID-19 is no longer an issue for our community. Tulsa Health Department and the CDC and other organizations such as the American Academy for Pediatrics recommends universal indoor masking for all teachers, staff, students, and visitors to K through 12 schools, regardless of vaccination status. As cases and hospitalizations surge in Tulsa County, we are in a dangerous, dangerous third wave. I implore every eligible community member to schedule your COVID-19 vaccination and, and to do everything you can to prevent the spread so we can keep our children safe. A layered, data-driven, scientific approach will get us through this third wave. Now, I'd like to introduce Dr. Som, who's Vice Chair of the Department of Internal Medicine and Chief of Staff at OSU Medical Center to speak with you. Thanks, Dr. Dart, and thanks, Dr. Gist, for inviting me to speak today. I wanted to reemphasize everything that Dr. Dart and Dr. Gist already mentioned. Some of the additional information that I think that is important for the public to hear as well is there are studies that will actually show that for adults, if a community can get vaccinated by an increase of 20 percentage points, that it actually shows that there's a reduction in about 50% of transmission to those individuals that are age 15 and younger. And so a lot of questions will arise about when is vaccines gonna be available for this younger age population? Well, they're not available yet because all vaccinations must go through thorough testing as far as the FDA is considered. And so at this point in time, there's not vaccines available for this younger age population that we are concerned about. So really the thing that we can do in addition to the mitigating practice that we've already talked about, social distancing, masking, hand hygiene, adults and anyone over the age of 12, if they get vaccinated, it's actually been proven to reduce the transmission quite considerably. Again, 20 percentage points increase in adults can actually reduce transmission 50% for those that are 15, age, 15 years old of age and younger, and that's a big deal. Um, as far as Dr. Dart was also talking about, we are seeing an increase. Last Friday when we spoke, there was probably about a 17.7% hospitalization rate of COVID-19. Now that's actually gone up to approximately 21%. And so we are seeing the Delta virus continue to spread. It is putting a strain on the system. There has been an increase in the amount of pediatrics patients that have been admitted for COVID virus. And so it becomes very important as we start talking about opening up schools. There was a lot of questions about, well, what's the chance of becoming ill with children that actually get infected by COVID? If you compare it to flu, which is anywhere between 39 and about 150 children can actually die from flu. Experts are actually indicating that can be up to 200 children can die from COVID-19 per year. So I always like to think about in this perspective, you know. We can talk about percentages all day long, but when it's your child or your loved one, even if it is less than 1% chance, when it's your child, it's 100%. So it's very important for us to do the things that we need to do to protect our children. And it is very, very important, speaking as a previous preschool teacher, to have that social connection. And going on and on and on year after year, because we're not sure when this will end because it'll be a new variant after Delta, we need to do the things that we can do to protect our kids until vaccines are available. 
And with that, I am going to turn it over uh, to Reverend Turner. Um, and he is a relentless community advocate and pastor at the historic Werner AME Church. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate all that has been said before me and I agree with it 1000% uh, to, of course, um, also Dr. Dard and Dr. Giss, thank you for your tireless uh, leadership without children and Dr. Dart without health department. Um, this issue is very personal uh, for me um, as far as COVID-19, I have I'm from Tuskegee, Alabama, born and raised, in fact, born in the same hospital that the syphilis study was done in, John Andrew Hospital, um, where the government, the United States government gave syphilis to black men from 1932 to 1972 and watched it, even after penicillin came out, watched the effects of it on their bodies. Um, so I know personally, um, the skepticism that people share, I, I live that. I was born in that environment. Um, but it got, it got close to home to me um, when my parents contracted COVID-19. And my parents who uh, were not, because at that time, the vaccine was just coming out. So they were not able to get the vaccine. Um, and I can't tell you the, the prayers we all prayed um, to make sure they were okay. Um, but even with those prayers, we, we pray for the vaccine um, to come and the vaccine has come. And I just, I wanna reiterate how important it is to get vaccinated. Um, those, now that the age has been lowered to 12, uh, it is vitally important for parents to first get vaccinated and then for you to vaccinate, have your children or grandchildren, nieces and nephews get the vaccine. Um, it works. Uh, I got my vaccine, my family got theirs, my wife and I, we both have ours. Um, the vaccine works um, and nothing, it doesn't take away at all from your faith um, by using a vaccine, simply as putting a seatbelt on in a vehicle doesn't diminish your faith in God for making sure you make it to your destination safely. Um, we believe uh, that God gives humankind wisdom to create beautiful things like seatbelts and, and life-saving things uh, like vaccines. And so I hope and I encourage all of you to, to not only you get vaccinated, but to vaccinate, make sure your children and loved ones get vaccinated and to wear your mask. Um, there's a, a script in the Bible about being your brother's keeper. Um, and that is so important in times like this, whereas you may uh, be vaccinated, it is so important for you to still wear your mask. Um, and it is so important for you to keep that mask on um, when you are in public, especially indoors, around other people. Um, that has shown to save lives and prevent the spread of COVID-19. And now, especially with the advent of the Delta variant, um, it is so vitally important for you to wear your mask. I at Vernon, we, we at Vernon have been open every day providing meals to those in need. Um, I understand how deplorable COVID-19 has been on our economy. We have been open every day since March 18th, 2020 and provided over 400,000 meals. And thanks be to God, our, our volunteers, none of them have contracted COVID-19. But that's because we, we have faith, but we also mask up. Um, and, and that is important that you do that to keep your mask on. And you can still, as churches have provided for hundreds of years, thousands of years, service to that community, but also to make sure that you use the wisdom that God gives you. I mean, he gives us all wisdom and, and, and by relying or by utilizing technology, um, by utilizing medicine, um, doesn't diminish your faith because it's really, it really is a, an extension of your faith because you still need to pray that the medicine actually works um, and keeps you um, in, in safety and in safety. And so I really am honored to be a part of this press conference. I cannot urge the community enough, both those of faith and those of no faith um, to get your vaccine um, now at the age of 12 and to mask up, mask up and have a wonderful, I'm looking forward to a fantastic school year. I have two school-aged children at home. I can't wait for them to 
be able to go and play with their friends and learn at school so they can really grow to become the great adults that we pray they can and will be. Thank you all. Reverend Turner, thank you. Thank you so much for that message. Dr. Som, thank you for being a part of this conversation. Really appreciate it. I'm gonna to have to follow up with you and make sure I got capture some of uh, the what you were sharing to, to pass that on. And Dr. Dart, always, always appreciate your leadership and your expertise. We want to uh, just see if you all have any questions for us um, and we're happy to engage with our friends who've joined us. Can we just jump in? Is that fine? Yeah, definitely. Okay, uh, Dr. Gist, uh, last week you talked about expecting students and staff to wear masks in schools uh, this school year, but obviously you can't order that legally. So what do you mean by expect, I guess? And are you gonna have masks on hands? And I guess if people don't wear the masks, what could, what could happen? Well, we absolutely will have masks on hand. Uh, so we will have the same practices that we have had in place, uh, you know, throughout last school year, where we have masks available, where we are encouraging the use of masks, and where we're talking to our students about why we wear the masks. Um, so Reverend Turner talked about being our brother's keeper. I mean, this is about um, self protection, yes, but it is about caring for others. It is about being a part of a community. It is about being a, um, a caring, kind, loving classmate, teammate, community member. And so that's what we will be emphasizing. Would there be any, any punishment, any restriction if, if a student doesn't wear a mask? We are not able to have a requirement around masks in Oklahoma right now. Is it going to look a lot like um, last year in the classrooms? I know, you know, there were some barriers in between desks, stuff like that. Um, arrows in the hallways on the floors. Will it look a lot like the same since you're, you keep preaching, you know, the three W's? Um, we we definitely are going to um, strive to have as much distance between our students as we can to have groups of students who work together um, in the younger grades as best as we can. But but we also know that we have school to to experience and and, and what matters is that our students are engaging that they're learning and. So it is, it is about supporting our school leaders and our teachers and finding, finding that right balance. But we absolutely can have really strong safety practices in place and still have a joyful, engaging, positive school year. And, um, and so that, that was true last year and, and certainly will be true this year as well. In terms of like desk shields, I mean, that was a, that was happening in some places and not in other places. And, and we want um, our team members to be comfortable. So they'll be making those choices, but there were plenty of examples, most actually last year where, where those kind of uh, barriers were not in place. Okay, I guess someone else can go. Someone else can go. <laughs> Hey, um, hi, my name's Elizabeth. I'm from uh, KWGS. I was just wondering, are you concerned since masks aren't a requirement for everyone and some students will wear them and some aren't, are you concerned that it will um, be a bully, an issue of bullying? Um, I feel so incredibly confident about our community and about our students, about our team members and um, their love for each other and their commitment to being a part of, of, a, of a team and a classroom family. And so I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. I have, I am completely confident actually that what we will see is a tremendous uh, amount of uh, consistency with wearing masks because of the ability for that to protect um, one's own self and family, but also friends and, and classmates. 
and also the broader community, because I think this issue about the variance is something that we cannot um, leave out of the conversation. Um, you know, masks are important because they help us to um, limit spread of, of this virus. Vaccines will help us to move past this pandemic. And the, until we see more uh, consistency and with safety measures and more people being vaccinated, we will see this variant um, peak and decline. We will see another variant come and another and another, and we will not be able to move past this chapter in our lives. And we simply must. And so that is what we wanted to do today is have this conversation to say, we need to keep our students in school in the short term, and we need to move beyond this pandemic and move back to focusing on, on things that matter to all of us the most. Thank you. Dr. Gist, you mentioned this a bit earlier about the teacher shortage. Does that worry the district at all that a teacher or several could be out sick with COVID? And then also are any teachers, you know, making it known that they're worried uh, about returning to the classrooms with maybe unvaccinated kids, especially the younger ones who aren't eligible yet? We are very concerned about staffing. Um, you know, the teacher shortage in Oklahoma has been something that has been uh, unfortunately, something that has been part of our education conditions for decades. It has been much more pronounced in the last decade, the last 10 years. And then in recent years has just been just unconscionable, actually, that as a state, we allow this condition to continue happening um, that 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 just does not serve our community and our children well. So we are very concerned about that shortage. And yes, we are very, very concerned that the teacher shortage and the, the fact that we have you know, fewer people in buildings than we need, combined with a, a, a huge shortage in substitute teachers, um, will limit our ability to manage um, quarantining and, and various situations where a teacher uh, or another team member um, uh, either tests positive or ha has an illness because we know we want folks to stay home when they're sick, um, especially now. And so we, we know that we're going to have a greater need at the same time that we have um, less ability to hold on to folks. So we are really, really concerned about that. And then Mason, there was a second part to that that yeah, are there any teachers who, who have come to um, you or anyone else that's right. just worried about unvaccinated children? Absolutely, um, and parents. Um, we, we have parents who are very concerned about this situation that we find ourselves in, um, particularly here in Oklahoma, um, who are very anxious to find out about um, mask expectations and you know so forth and so people are very concerned and I would say in particular I want to just say again that we have team members who um, are at even greater risk not only because of underlying conditions but because there are some um, uh, medical conditions that mean that the vaccine doesn't provide the same kind of protection for some of our um, some folks as it does for others and that puts a great risk on people that we love and care about who are a part of our school community, a part of our Tulsa community. And um, so there are just so many reasons why it is incredibly important for everyone who's eligible to, to get vaccinated. And I really do believe that most people who have not yet been vaccinated are not doing it out of some kind of like strident belief that this is you know, I, I don't know what, but most people, I think, just either didn't feel like it was necessary, maybe they're um, young and healthy and just didn't feel like it was important, or they haven't gotten around to it. Um, or in, in other cases, I, I, I someone I love, um, who we learned what was underlying all of this was, and this was a grown up, a fear of the shot. 
And so it was literally a matter of going and holding hands, which is what our family did to say, you can do this. It's a shot. It's going to be fine. And it was, it was not at all what the, what this uh, person had made it out to be, but you just don't know what it is that might be holding someone back from that vaccine. So, um, so please, you know, ask and encourage um, uh, so that we can, so that we can take care of each other and our loved ones. Dr. Gias, uh, if I may jump in here, um, related to teachers' concerns, one of the things that um, we do share with, with teachers and our families is, um, thanks to the generos generosity of Tolson's, we have been able to invest um, significant amounts of dollars in our ventilation systems. So we really have incredibly high quality ventilation systems at our schools, uh, where we have uh, frequent fresh air intake um, with um, MER 13 filtration, air scrubbers, um, so that we are really providing the best air quality possible under, under the current circumstances. So, and I know that that goes a long way to give peace of mind to families and, and our team members, um, because we do have those capabilities. Thank you, Jorge, so much. And that was Jorge Robles, our Chief uh, Finance and Operations Officer, for anyone who may not know. And I'm so glad you underscored that point. That is so important. Ventilation really, really matters. And we want families to know and our team members to know that we do have excellent ventilation. And uh, and be, um, we've been able to do that because of uh, the investment the Tulsans have made in the bond. And then we also um, are right now engaging in additional improvement of ventilation because of the investment uh, that the federal government made in recovery through the um, federal recovery dollars. And that's about a $50 million investment that we're continuing to make. So our ventilation is, is quite outstanding. Dr. Gist. Yes. Did you say um, how many or if um, staff, when it comes to staff getting the vaccine, what that looks like? Do you have an idea of how many members have actually done that? You know, we we don't have good data on that. I will I will have to say that we um, we don't. Um, that is information that we keep about members of our team. It's um, it's not appropriate. And um, while we have asked, we we really really don't feel confident that we have uh, a good answer to to that question. And um, so I don't I don't feel confident. Um, speaking to that I do I do know that it's a, a good portion um, of our team members particularly among teachers um, but we need more and so this this call to to vaccination is certainly for our families our students and the broader Tulsa community but it's to team Tulsa as well Um, Andrea, I can, I see uh, Andrea just posted in the chat, the, the teacher and substitute shortage currently. I don't have those numbers off the top of my head. I see um, Devin Fletcher is on here, but I can tell you that in terms of teacher vacancies that um, the last numbers that I looked at, which was late last week, were um, about where we were last year. But I mean, that was um, dozens and dozens of vacancies in, uh, in terms of classroom teachers um, uh, and, and substitute teachers I haven't seen. But I will tell you last year, we carried throughout the school year um, having, generally speaking, about a quarter of the number of substitute teachers that we had pre-COVID. At a time where we needed more substitutes than we've ever needed, we had just a fraction of the substitutes that, that we would even normally have. So, um, so I'm sure Lauren will help us um, connect with the team and get you some more specific numbers on those shortages, uh, Andrea. And anyone who may want that, I don't have those off the top of my head. Okay, well, thank you. I, I uh, was out visiting a school and I stopped to run an errand on my way and I was uh, in, in, a, in the line checking out and um, 
a little four-year-old with, was with his mom and uh, he was telling the, the cashier how excited he is because he is going to school and he was using his hands and he was so animated and he was so excited and it brought tears to my eyes because I just I was just this I thought this is what it's all about our our kiddos want to be in school they love to learn they love to be with their friends um, our families need them to be there they they know the value of an education and they need them to be there because that's how life works uh, our kids are at school while we're working and carrying forward with the rest of life. So, uh, so let's make that happen. We're ready, and uh, we're asking all Tolsons to to help us out and help us to have a great school year and and to stay in school in person safely. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thanks again, Reverend Turner, Dr. Dart, and Dr. Som.